Okay, having, se uh, have, having set that up, let's save this. Let's publish it, though that's technically done whenever you uh, test it in scale form. And let's go and put it in the game. Okay, now we've gone back into the UDK editor and I've opened up that same SF tutorial level that we had before. Let's go back into the content browser. Now we're going to import, let's see, we have this SF package that we had before. Um, we're going to import into that, find the SFW that you just created. That would be for me, sftutorialhud.swf. Open that up. Now we want that to be part of SF package. We want it to be part of the group UI. And I'm going to call this SF HUD. OK. Now we have two SFW movies. One is for the menu, one is for the HUD. Now notice these stars mean that something has not been saved. We always want to make sure that everything gets saved. So right click on SF package and save before we go any further. Okay, actually this is all we need to do in the editor. Everything else is going to be done in um, Visual Studio. So go ahead and close this out. Okay now, let's go back into uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and go back into the SF tutorial project that we had started before. We're going to have to edit some of these uh, default scripts that we had put together before. Let's start with SF tutorial info and once again to save time I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste from the wiki. You are free to do the same, just make sure that if you have changed any of the names that you update these as well. So we're going to take this script right here and we are going to replace default properties with them. So just to explain a few things, acronym equals SF, that is kind of like the DM in front of the deathmatch um, levels. It basically tells you what you're looking for in front of this kind of map. The player controller class sets the uh, controller class equal to this script right there. The, uh, this is the important part for what we're doing here. We are setting the HUD type equal to sftutorial.sfhud. We're about to write this script in just a moment. Now, this one, b use classic HUD equals true. We are not using the classic HUD, but what that particular variable tells the engine is that the engine should be looking at HUD type to decide what to put on the HUD. And then these are some variables that uh, I actually have no idea what they mean, but uh, apparently we are supposed to have them, so go ahead and change those. All right, since we have an SF HUD object here that we don't actually have, we're going to add that now. Right click on classes, go to add new item, and of course this will be an Unreal script, which you will call SF. Now, once again, to uh, save time, I'm just going to cut and paste from the wiki, and I recommend you do the same. Uh, this is going to end up being this. Just to go over some of these things really quickly, uh, first of all, this uh, class extends UT HUD base. Um, basically, I don't understand any of this code particularly. I'm not sure where he uses it, but uh, it seems to work pretty well. There are essentially three functions here. One uh, deals with the HUD when it's destroyed. One deals with it when it first loads, uh, and that is post to begin play. And the other um, basically updates it for every tick about all I think we have to do or understand here. The only thing that you might be really interested in seeing is here we have a new class, SFGFXHUD, which once again we have not made. So let's make that. Go to classes again and add new item. The name of this Unreal script will be SFGFXHUD. here and 
let's talk about this one a little bit. Uh, first of all, this extends GFX Movie Player. Uh, he sets a floating point number last help PC, which essentially ensures that instead of updating for every frame, it will only update the HUD when the player changes his health. Uh, there's a couple math functions in here, round, num, and get PC. And then this is the major function in it uh, when given the player control of PC. It starts the uh, last health PC at some ridiculous number, so the uh, HUD will immediately get updated. And uh, now this is of interest to people. He sets three variables, and each one of them, if you remember the tutorial, points towards something that was uh, an instance name in Flash. So in this case, he takes health MC, that is the variable object from the flash file health bar. This bar is uh, SF bar MC, which was part, if you remember, of the health bar. And then, of course, this variable is the health text, the 100%. If you follow his algorithm, it's pretty simple. Uh, whenever the, well, simple and elegant, whenever the health current health of the player is not equal to the last health of the player, you update last health to current health, and then you change the length, the x scale of the bar, and you change the text of that 100%. Now the only other thing that you really need to be sure you pay attention to really quickly is if you look down here, remember I said that it was very important to pay attention to uh, package and the group and the name when you import it into UVK. This is the package name, this is the group name, this is the movie name. Alrighty then, uh, I think that we are probably ready to build. Alright, we're going to start a build. It's going to take a little while, so I will pause. Okay, welcome back. It has uh, loaded the menu, so if we click on play, this should take us to the level, and sure enough, there is our health bar. We're going to run over and grab the bazooka.